Hey what's up you guys, it's your boy Titan, and in today's video I'm going to be telling you about my first date with a boy. If you're wondering what I'm eating, it's these gummy sharks, they're so good. I don't know if you guys know what these are, probably. These little things, so freaking bomb. This story gets a little bit cringy, so fun fun fun. The boy was nice, but like still cringy. So I have to tell you guys that I started dating really late. Like really late. Like my first date was at 20. Just a complete mess. Just a complete mess. But before I get into today's content, I'm gonna need you to give this video a big fat thumbs up. Click that subscribe button so that way you can become part of the family and don't forget to click that notification button so you can get notified every time I post. And so I don't drag out this intro, let's get into today's video. Hey, hey, hey! So before I get into the main story, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a backstory. And that goes a little something like this. I was 20 and I was in college in Pittsburgh. Not that it really matters. And um, in the dorms there wasn't a lot to do, but we did have a pool table in the basement. So a lot of people would go down there and play pool against their friends or whatever. And I would never go because I don't play pool. I'm just not a pool player. Not in real life, but on iMessage games. <laughs> Get your ass beat. So anyway, some boys from my room and some boys from another dorm room would always go down there to kind of have like little competitions. So one day I decided, let me go down there, let me check it out, let me see what it's all about. I ain't got nothing else to do. So in our basement where the pool table was, there was the pool table here and then a couch right here. So for visual representation, there's a pool table here and then there's a couch right here. My roommates and the other boys were playing at the pool table and I was sitting on the couch right here kind of just watching them and cheering on my roommates. And while I was doing that, there was another couch right here <laughs> and there was a boy sitting on it and his name is, let's call him Al. Al was sitting here and I was sitting here. So we're kind of like diagonal from each other. And I was a decent looking man, like I was staring at him when I wasn't cheering for my roommates. And I knew he was gay because his roommates would sometimes come over and talk to me about him because they wanted us to hook up. And to me that's awkward so I would never actually go talk to him. So this is the first time I ever seen him. So I guess he felt me staring at him because he kept glancing at me and smiling. He was like... And then I was like... So we gave each other the look for a couple minutes and then he finally decided to switch couches and sit next to me. So he sits down and he's like, what are you staring at? Why are you staring at me? Ha ha ha. Like joking around. And I'm like, nothing. I ain't staring at you, boy, you know? Trying to be like cute, but like ugly. So we spent our time down there just kind of like talking and making fun of our roommates. And then at the end of the night, we exchanged numbers. And then later that night, I went back to my room and he had texted me asking if I had a Valentine's Day date. And this was like three or four days before Valentine's Day and I didn't have one so I said no. And he was like, what you do now? Get your ass up and hold my hand. Does anybody remember that Norbit reference? If you do, we hear. We hear. But no, he texted me saying something like, well, you do now. I'm gonna take you out for Valentine's Day. So I said yes, of course. And I don't know how, but we ended up making it a double date with me and him, his roommate, and his roommate's girlfriend. And that's it. That's the entire story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Nah, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. So over the next couple days, we kind of like hang out. He comes to my room. I go to his room. We walk to class together. You know, just hanging out. Nothing crazy. So fast forward to the day before Valentine's Day. I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do because this was my first date. And my friend at the time, who was also my roommate was just helping me with like what to wear, what to say, what to do. He was giving me like tips and tricks. We like role played through a couple scenarios. <laughs> Which was weird because he ended up liking me too. But that's a story for another day. So I spent that whole entire day just like preparing for it. And at the time you guys, I was cutting my own hair. I'll never do it again, like ever. I will never cut my own hair again. I mean, if I really needed to, I would, but like, it ain't it. So my hair wasn't like crazy, but it wasn't like perfect. And I thought, okay, I'll just cut my hair. I'll like give me a lineup so it's like sharp and fresh. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So at first it was fine, you guys. I did my lineup, I did my mustache, cause I only had a mustache at the time. And I did my eyebrows and I looked 
fine. Like I should have just left it at that. So I decided to cut it down a little bit. Oh my god. And I'm not like great at cutting hair. So my dumbass puts on the wrong guards. And if you don't know what guards are, they're just like these little things that you put on clippers to like guard the blade from going too low into your hair. So like if the guard is one inch, the lowest you can cut your hair is one inch. Or if it's two inches, the lowest you can cut your hair is two inches. And so far and so forth. Anywho, so I grab the wrong guard and I put it on the blade and I start cutting my hair and I go Zzz. And at first I'm like, oh that looks shallow. That's weird, why does it look so low? It must just be my eyes, right? So I continue going and the more and more I go, the more I realize I'm chucking it up, like bad. My hair, you guys, it was so shallow. Like my whole head was like this, like this part here. Barely any hair, like swear no hair at all. I might as well have been bald. So I was freaking out and my friend suggested that I just wear a hat or like a beanie because it was cold outside. So I had this black beanie, I'll never forget, I put it on my head and it worked. Like literally it worked so well. I don't have a beanie to demonstrate but I wore it kind of like this so that way you can only see like the perimeter of my head like this. And it still looked pretty shallow but like it was not nearly as bad as if you saw my whole head. So fast forward to Valentine's Day. I get dressed. I'm like waiting for him to come over. He finally does with his roommate and his roommate's girlfriend. They looked a mess so I felt better about myself. And she was not pretty at all. I mean she was a pretty girl but that day she just was not. So the place that we were going to wasn't far from the dorms. It was kind of like a it was like a five minute drive literally like five minutes and we decided to uber there and him and his roommate were like super nice they paid for everything they paid for the uber they paid for dinner they paid for whatever like literally anything we wanted they paid for it come to think of it i should have got more stuff so anyway on the way there inside of the car it was so hot like the driver had the heat on hell literally like on hell so i had my shirt my sweater on top of that and then i had my jacket on top of that plus my beanie which i was not taking off for anybody and i sweat so easily you guys like literally i'll sweat in like 50 degree weather so i decided to take my jacket off in the car it's like tight too because all four of us sat in the back seat because nobody wanted to sit up front with the uber man why i don't know and al is like so nice he kind of could tell that i was feeling uncomfortable so he was just like comforting me just saying like don't worry we'll be out of the car soon whatever just like stuff i really didn't care about but it was like nice hearing you know so we get up to the restaurant we get out i'm like thank god because it was cold outside and i was able to like kind of cool myself off so we're out front of the restaurant and i'm like okay cool we're here at the restaurant i'm finally cooled down we can go inside eat it's gonna be cool it's gonna be chill we go inside the restaurant and it is boiling in there it had to be like 100 degrees inside that restaurant i swear to you not and it was like this hibachi style restaurant where they would cook in front of you so there's like the grill and the fire and hot food so it was just like hot so immediately we get in there i take off my jacket my sweater leave my shirt on i'm like doing this the whole time like trying to cool myself off but i'm not taking off my beanie so we finally get seated we order our drinks and our food and it comes to the table and now this time I wasn't really like sweating, but I was so hot. But all in all, it was like a good time. And we're just talking about like random stuff like our childhood, our majors, why we chose them, our roommates, just like really random stuff. It was a good conversation though. So out of nowhere, Al looks at me and he's like, did you cut your hair? And I'm like, um, yeah, it's bad though, so. And he's like, I'm sure it's not that bad, let me see. And he reaches over to grab my beanie. He's, it was like slow motion, you guys. I swear to God, it was like. <sighs> I was so embarrassed, my head was so ugly. I had no hair. Everybody's face was like. It was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. And it got super quiet. Like, nobody said anything. It was that bad. So I'm, like, super embarrassed. I snatched my beanie back from him. I, like, shoved it back on my head. And they didn't know me well enough to, like, point it out, I guess. So they just kind of pretended that it wasn't a thing. Like, they didn't just witness it. So everyone went back to, like, eating and drinking and sort of talking. And I'm still embarrassed. So this is where the date kind of turns bad. So since I was embarrassed, I started, like, sweating more. I could feel myself sweating because I sweat when I get embarrassed. I just be sweating all the time. I got up to go to the bathroom and I'm in there doing my business. You know, sitting at the urinal, peeing like you're supposed to do at a bathroom. Al comes into the bathroom, comes up behind me and like puts his hands around like my waist area, kind of close to like my pelvis. Basically like beneath my belly button, but like above my, my man bits. And I'm just like, uh, what are you doing? Can you like back up? So he like let go of me and backed up and waited for me by the 
sink. So I get done using the bathroom. I'm like really uncomfortable. I'm like, did he really just do that? I need to get the hell up out of here. So at first I was kind of feeling him. Then when we got to the restaurant and he took off my hat, I was not feeling him. So I was pissed off. And then he just like creeped me out in the bathroom. So it was too much, especially for like my first date. You know what I'm saying? So from that moment on, I was like pretty quiet, like pretty quiet. I was like answering people if they talked to me, but I wasn't starting no conversation. I wasn't saying anything to anybody. I was just down. They kind of talked a lot. I was just doing a lot of listening. Like, mm-hmm, yeah, oh, wow, mm-hmm, like that. So fast forward and dinner is done and it's time to go home. Al and his roommate wanted to take us on this like um, romantic trail and the trail started at the restaurant but then it kind of like kind of led out near this prison that was near the dorms. Yes, our dorms was near a prison. It's like the most safest, dangerous place to be. So we're like, yeah, whatever, let's go, let's do it. I kind of wanted to go home at this point but Al's roommate's girlfriend was super excited to do it so we just kind of did it. And me, I'm the type of person that even though I feel uncomfortable, I'm just gonna go through with it until the day is over because I was like okay that was just a couple of moments maybe it'll get better yada 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 I just suffer through stuff just to see just to just see and it always fails so I don't know why I always do that I need to just like whenever I feel uncomfortable just leave well actually I do that now a lot with like any situation so anyways we go through the trail and the trail is lined with trees and inside of the trees there's lights and, and cute little like Valentine's Day decorations I guess it was kind of like a Valentine's Day trail or whatever. He grabs my hand and we're walking down the trail holding hands and I could tell that he's really really into the date but I'm not. I'm just kind of over the day. I wanted to go home so bad and the trail was actually nice. We talked a little bit. Well he did. I more so listened but all in all it was really nice. So fast forward to the end of the trail. We still had to walk past the prison right? Coincidentally there was like a fire drill or something that happened at the prison. So all of the inmates were like chained together on the sidewalk out front of the prison. And we had to walk past all those prisoners. Mind you, he's still holding my hand. And I was still uncomfortable with my sexuality at the time, so I really was not for PDA. And like I said, back then, I would just suffer through stuff even if I was uncomfortable with it, so I just kind of let it happen. So the prisoners didn't bother us at first because I had my hood on. Plus, it was pretty dark, and I guess they just couldn't see that it was two guys. But boy, when we walked underneath that street light, one of the prisoners was like, oh my God, those are two guys. And the rest of them started laughing some of them were like uh mocking us and like saying things there was female prisoners out there too and they were yelling but like at the male prisoners to shut up some of them were angry because they just wanted to get inside because it was freezing outside it was just a lot and i didn't know what to do you know mind you his roommate and his roommate's girlfriend didn't care they was like ahead of us they didn't even turn around to see if we was okay and i was kind of just like don't worry about them don't listen to them blah 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 blah, blah. so we eventually walked past them and it felt like for Ever. It took so long to walk past these prisoners. I was trying to speed walk, but since he was trying to prove a point, he was like holding my hand super tight and walking like slow to show everybody that he didn't care. And I was like, nigga, I just want to get out. Like hold your own hand, you know what I'm saying? Prove a point by yourself. I gotta go. So we eventually walked past them and it was awkward. And thank God the dorms are literally right on the other side of the prison. We walk inside the dorms. When you walked inside of the dorm building, there was a mail room to the left where we got our mail. And I was like, oh wait, let me check my mail. I didn't get it today or something like that. So I walk with him to his mailbox. His roommate and his girlfriend go up to their room or whatever. He gets his mail out of his mailbox and he closes his little mailbox. And I'm standing next to him just like watching him. And then he kisses me on the cheek and I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Like I said, he was nice, but then at the same time, he was rude for snatching my hat off and creepy for what he did in the bathroom, annoying for what he did in front of the prison. So I was really just like over that day and I was already at home, basically. I just wanted to go to my room so bad. And then you're gonna have the nerve to kiss me on the cheek like everything was good and dandy. No. But like I said, I was just going with the flow. But anyway, we get on the elevator and as the doors were closing, literally they were like this far apart from closing. I have my back against the wall, like facing the door. And he steps in front of me. He puts his arms around my waist and kisses me on the lips. And I was so uncomfortable, like so uncomfortable. Like I just wanted to leave. And in my head, I'm like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. And plus it was awkward because the elevators had a camera in it and the security guard always looked at the cameras because they always had stories to tell people about who they seen and what they did in the elevator and yada, yada, yada. He stepped back from me 
and he pushed our floor number because we lived on the same floor. And it was a little awkward when we got at the elevator because he was just like, well, did you enjoy the date? Um, we should go on another one sometime soon. And all I said to like respond was, yeah, I think I'm gonna go to bed now. It was like seven o'clock and I didn't have class in the morning and he knew that. <laughs> so he walked me to my room and then he just kind of like hugged me and was like, all right, good night, I'll text you later. And he did text me later that night just saying like, hey, sorry if I did something wrong. I could sense that you were a little bit uncomfortable. Didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. And I just let him down easy. I was just like, I just don't think I'm ready to like start dating right now. I'm not in the right headspace. He was nice about it. He was just like, yeah, I understand. Even though I started dating a new boy like a week later. <sighs> Oh my god, I'm so bad. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole story. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, depending on what time I upload this video. But I love you guys, and I'll see you guys on Saturday. So, yeah, see you Saturday. Bye!